I'm going to discuss the continuity equation in this video. The continuity equation is written as follows. We have the divergence of the current density plus the time derivative of the charge density is equal to zero. This is an empirically derived law. It is not something that we can derive from first principles. Um, and I will describe how we might go about thinking about where it comes from in this video. First of all, let's just think about some definitions. Um, the charge density, the current density, sorry, J, is simply the current flowing through an area. And the normal to that area element is what gives the current density its direction. You can write it in terms of a charge density and a velocity, j is equal to rho times v, but you have to be a little bit careful with this. Imagine if you had two different particles in a situation where there was a positive and a negative particle, then you would have to think about the relative different velocities. Um, however, that's the basic definition of it. And we write that the total current I flowing through a surface S is an integral, it's the integral over that surface S of j, the current density, dot n, the normal to the surface, ds. And that is the total current crossing the surface. Um, and notice that this doesn't have to be a closed surface. So that's crossing the surface s. Now, using that, we can think about the total current flowing out of a volume. Um, so the total current flowing out of um, the volume V, which will be bounded by a closed surface. And notice this time we do have a closed surface, um, and it's a closed surface because it's bounding a volume. Um, S is given as follows. It's the closed surface integral of J dot N ds. And of course, using the divergence theorem, we can rewrite a closed surface integral as a volume integral um, of div j dot dv. That shouldn't be a dot there. It should be div dj dv. So <coughs> that's um, the current flowing out of a volume. What about the charge in that volume? Well, we can write that quite simply charge um, in the volume V is simply given by Q is equal to the volume integral of rho dV. That's a simple definition based on the definition of a charge density. So we can therefore say the net current flowing into the volume V is given by dQ by dt. And notice that here Q is generally simply a number, so we're using a total differential. At this point, we need to invoke the principle of charge conservation. Charge conservation is a simple principle which appears to be obeyed by the universe that we're in, um, which says that charge is neither created nor destroyed. And it can be stated quite strongly in that it is not, it is always obeyed even in a small volume. Um, if it's obeyed in a small volume, then we can write the following. We can say that dq by dt, that is the net current flowing into the volume, must equal the total current, the negative of the total current flowing out. Um, so let's say equals minus i. And in, as we've just derived above, the total current flowing out of a volume is the is minus the volume integral of div j. Let's put in our statement for the, the charge. So we now have d by dt of the volume integral of rho dv is equal to minus the volume integral of div j dv. Now, if you're being formal and careful with maths, 
At this point, you need to think a little bit carefully about the left-hand side of the equation here, um, where we're taking the time derivative. The reason we have to be careful is because there are two things that could change here. There's both the charge density and the volume. We're going to assume that the volume is fixed, so we will therefore convert the full differential into a partial differential, because rho itself can be a function of position and time. And so we write the following. We say that the volume integral of partial d rho by dt dv is equal to minus the volume integral of div j dv. Let's tidy this up and move everything to the left-hand side. So now we have the volume integral of div j plus d rho by dt dv is equal to zero. The only way that this can be true for an arbitrary volume, and remember we didn't actually specify what the volume was at the beginning, is if the integrand, the thing that we're integrating, which I'm just putting into brackets, is also equal to zero. So we can conclude that the divergence of j plus d rho by dt is equal to zero. Um, and this is the continuity equation. So you'll notice that this is based on the assumption of charge conservation and also on some definitions of current. In the lectures, we did briefly touch on the fact that we used the continuity equation to motivate the Ampere-Maxwell law. Um, so the Ampere-Maxwell law actually can also be used to motivate the continuity equation. It's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. Um, so we've got the Ampere-Maxwell law, which is given as the curl of B is equal to mu naught J plus mu naught epsilon naught dE by dt. If we take the divergence of both sides, then with a little bit of work, we can derive or we can recover the continuity equation. The left-hand side, the divergence of the curl of B, is identically equal to zero. That's true for any curl. And so we're left with the following. We're going to cancel out the mu naught because there's, there's nothing on the left-hand side that we need to worry about. So we can just say that the divergence of J plus epsilon naught times the divergence of dE by dt is equal to zero. And then we're going to use Gauss's law, which is that the divergence of E is rho over epsilon naught to write that div j plus d rho by dt is equal to zero. So if you accept the Ampere-Maxwell law as a fundamental law, then from that you can derive the continuity equation when we were talking about how to convert from Ampere's law to the Ampere-Maxwell Ampere -Maxwell law or Ampere-Maxwell equation, we used the continuity equation to motivate the extra term, the time derivative of the electric field that we added to it. Um, all of these are things which are derived from our experience and observations. As far as we can tell, charge is conserved in the universe, and that's expressed in the continuity equation.